Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about complex ion reactions, and this class of reactions shows up on the AP Chemistry exam. It's worth your while to be familiar with them. So what I'd like to do in this webcast is to give you some hints for recognizing complex ion reactions. They're not always obvious. Some practice with writing them, really practicing the net ionic equations which students need to master uh, for the synthesis of these complex ions. And we're going to go through Lewis acid base theory in the context of these reactions because it helps make these reactions more understandable. All right, so Lewis acid base theory isn't actually part of the AP chemistry curriculum, but if you go on and take organic chemistry in college, and many of you will, Lewis acids and bases are going to come up again. They're quite important. So let's talk about them briefly. A Lewis acid is defined as a species that is an electron pair acceptor or can receive an electron pair. Metal cations, such as the copper two ion shown here, is a, they're all potential Lewis acids. They have an empty orbital. They have a place for these electron pairs to come in. Lewis bases are defined as species that can give away an electron pair, electron pair donors. Any species with a lone pair is a potential Lewis base. For example, the water molecule here with its lone pairs, it can give them away or do something with them. All right. When an acid, a Lewis acid, reacts with a Lewis base, the Lewis base gives its lone pair to the acid and they share them. They form what's called a coordinate covalent bond. This holds them together. All right, all we mean by a coordinate covalent bond is that both electrons being shared in that bond came from the same atom, but it does hold the species together. And we're seeing this kind of coordinate covalent bond when we form the complex ions that we want to focus on in this podcast. So let's start with how do I recognize it's a complex ion? Well, certain metals tend to form complex ions. So here's a list, silver, iron, copper, cobalt, nickel, chromium, zinc, these all form complex ions fairly commonly. You'll notice, if you have your periodic table handy, that many of them, are, they're all transition metals. Now, there's one other metal that tends to form complex ions a lot, and that's aluminum. It's not a transition metal, but most of these um, elements are transition metals, and that can be very helpful. And again, they're all acting as Lewis acids when they form these complex ions. The cations have empty orbitals. All right, so they're going to react with a Lewis base. We're going to call these bases ligands in this in context, but that's okay. Um, certain species tend to be the Lewis bases in these reactions, the ligands. Hydroxide, ammonia, water, all common ligands, the cyanide ion, the chloride ion, the thiocyanate ion. These are all very likely to form complex ions with the transition metals that we saw on the previous slide. So if you need to write this down, that's fine. Go ahead and, and pause the webcast and write that down. All right, so the ligands are all acting here as Lewis bases. They all have a lone pair and they can donate them. All right, the other helpful hint that you really want to make sure you know is that the description of the reaction may involve something with a concentrated solution or it may say an excess of this substance is added or a substance that contains the ligand if it's an ion. All right, so look for those keywords, concentrated, excess. That's really what you want to be looking for to help you recognize that, yes, this is a complex ion reaction. Because sometimes it's not obvious. That's sometimes the hardest thing about writing these reactions out is just identifying the situation. All right, the next helpful hint that you really need to know it's a rule of thumb more than anything else. The number of ligands in the complex ion can, is often twice the charge of the metal cation. What we're asking you to do is write reactions that are plausible. These actually occur stepwise, and there may be more than one reaction as you keep adding more ligands. So we just want you to write an overall balanced equation for the formation of this complex ion. And we just need you to come up with something that's realistic and plausible. So the number of ligands being twice the charge is a nice and reliable way to do it. All right, it doesn't mean that other answers are wrong. We just want you to be able to come up with something that makes sense at this point for AP Chemistry students. So let's do an example together. We're going to predict the products and write a balanced and a net ionic equation. Here's the reaction. An excess of concentrated ammonia solution is added to an aqueous solution of copper two sulfate. So when we pull this apart, I have an excess 
of concentrated ammonia. Well, that's telling me that ammonia is my ligand. Okay. Um, great. I've got copper 2 sulfate. It's really the metal cation that I care about. All right. And that's copper with a plus 2 charge. Sulfate here is just a spectator. It's really not going to be doing anything in the reaction. So we're ready now to say, oh, I've got a complex ion, right? I've got a concentrated solution. I've got something that can be the central atom in this complex ion. All right, so I'm going to start. Here's my copper 2 sulfate solution. It is a solution. It's ionic. The ions are going to dissociate, so I'm writing copper 2 plus plus sulfur. I've left out the states of matter, but everything here is aqueous. All right, I'm going to need four ammonia molecules to react with the copper. Why four? Well, as we talked about just a few moments ago, the copper ion has a charge of plus two, and I want twice as many ligands, so I need four ammonia molecules to make this all work. All right, and I'm going to write a complex ion. Note, I'm going to write the complex ion in square brackets. All right, I'm going to put the Cu first. All right, start with the cation. Then I have four ammonia molecules. All right, four NH3, so I have to write parentheses NH3, four. The overall charge here is plus two, all right? And I know that because the copper was plus two, but the ammonium molecules are neutral. So the overall charge of the species is plus two. Now, I do still have those sulfate ions running around, all right? So in my complete ionic equation, I would show that. Ultimately, we want a net ionic equation, and we know that sulfates are spectator. It was sulfate at the beginning, it was sulfate at the end really didn't do anything, so we can eliminate it from our equation. We can basically just cross it out, and you can leave it like that if you want to, especially a test setting where you're in a hurry, um, or you can rewrite it if you want to. But again, just think about your timing. Don't spend time writing more than you need to. All right, so our net ionic equation, copper ions react with four ammonias to form our complex ion. We're not going to worry about the nomenclature of these um, today, but anyway, that's what we have. All right, so we know that our Lewis acid is copper with a 2 plus charge. The Lewis base is the ammonia, all right? The other thing I wanted to point out is that many complex ions are intensely colored. My students do this uh, experiment, this reaction as part of a lab, and we went outside and we were adding our ammonia solution to our copper 2 sulfate solution, and you can see the intense color changes. As the ammonia gets added, you can start to see a light blue precipitate forms. And then as we continue adding ammonia, we drive the reaction to make more products and we get this very deep midnight blue complex. It's really, really pretty. All right. So you can actually use the complex ion formation as a way of identifying what species you have in a solution if you need to identify unknowns. All right. Um, so. Let's go on and do a second example. We're going to predict the products and write a balanced net ionic equation for this reaction. A concentrated solution of hydrochloric acid is added to solid silver nitrate. Well, reading that through again, oh, I've got a concentrated solution, right? Oh, that's probably a ligand of hydrochloric acid. Well, we know hydrochloric acid has chloride ions. So that must be the ligand chloride. And silver nitrate, well, it's got silver, which we know is a common uh, metal that can form complex ions. So this is definitely a complex ion situation. All right. So, oops, sorry, that got cut off at the top, but that's okay. We had solid silver nitrate. It was solid initially. Of course, this is soluble in water, but we're just going to add the hydrochloric acid solution in. We know hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so we have to write it ions dissociated, right? It dissociates completely. So we'll have H plus plus Cl minus. All right. So when the complex ion forms, it's going to be between the silver ions and the chloride. But the silver has a charge of plus one. We know that. So that means I'm going to need two chloride ions to make this all work. All right. So when I write my, co my complete ionic equation, I have the silver nitrate as a solid. I need two chlorides, which means I have two H pluses. I'm going to form my complex ion, AgCl2 minus. Notice the square brackets, the charge is outside. And that's because, again, the silver has a charge of plus one. Each chloride has a charge of minus one. Gives me an overall charge of 
um, minus 1 for the complex ion. I had some nitrates. I had my H pluses. Okay, um, so that would be my complete ionic equation. All right, the net ionic equation, really the H plus ions are a spectator here, um, so I can eliminate them. The nitrate was part of that solid silver nitrate originally, so I can't eliminate that. Um, and I'm left with this being my net ionic equation. Great, I hope you feel more comfortable writing complex ion reactions now, and come again and listen to more webcasts.